Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the farewell session of the AIOS before we meet again next year in Indore, I suppose. I will just take a few minutes to talk about an invention which has been here only about 20 years. And uh, I just want a few minutes attention, if you may. And I am put it in a form of 10 questions, 20 questions like that. What is optical biometry? In the simplest definition, it is light is used rather than ultrasound to measure axial length for IOL power calculations. That's all. Okay. But why? What is it? Why should we use that? Why would I do use, use light? What is wrong with ultrasound? The simple reason is accurate. It's almost eight to nine times more accurate than ultrasound, which is quite a lot, as we understand. Why is that? That's because you see resolution increases as wavelength decreases. Basic principles of physics, resolution increases as wavelength decreases and uh, infrared light which is about 780 nanometers, is wavelength is about 10 times shorter that to, to that of a 10 megahertz ultrasonic probe. The wavelength is shorter, so the resolution increases, the accuracy increases. That is the one particular reason why I should switch to optical biometry. And I've shown you the <coughs> spectrum there. Now, what is the principle? Well, the principle is called partial coherence tomography, where a diode emits light and the measures the delay reflected from the tear film in RP and calculates from the difference in interference patterns from that which sent and what was reflected. From the difference in interference patterns, it calculates the axial length. The rest is too complicated. I really don't want to think you want to know that. This is not a physics lecture. Most of us do not like physics and maths. That's, we, that's why we are here. Otherwise, we are in IIT. Why did it, when did it appear and why when we informed? Well, in September 1990, almost 18 years now, Zeiss launched the IL Master. Carl Zeiss launched the IL Master, and IL Master 500 was the first machine. It was revolutionary, and most of the groundwork was done by a person whose formula we use very commonly, Dr. Wolfgang Hages. At that time, most of us were busy, too busy, shoving a standard 19 diopter IL in every eye. That is why we were not aware of this. What does it have which your ultrasound doesn't have? Why must I take up the new technology? Well, there are three basic problems, you know, theoretically. Let's look at that. The first one is that ultrasound measures the axial length, anatomical axial length, which is from the anterior pole to the posterior pole. But this is what the ultrasound does. But the optical biometry measures coronal vertex to foveal distance, which is not the same thing at all. The fovea is not in the center. It's temporal, and the distance is not the same. And in <coughs> eyes which are more than 26 millimeter, it can make a significant difference of 0.8 millimeter. It can be 0.8 millimeter means about 2.5 diopters extra off the target, which is difference between 6 by 6 and 6 by 60. 2.5 diopters is difference between 6 by 6 and 6 by 60. You know what happens when the patient complains of that first day post-op. And particularly in uh, staphylomatous eyes, the axial length may be off as much as 3 millimeters, which can line up with a 9 diopter difference, not at all <coughs> to spring upon a post-op first day morning. The second problem is that the ultrasound measures the axial length till the internal limiting membrane. But that's not the location of the photoreceptors, which are close to the RP. So what it does, it measures it somewhere close to the ILM, but the RP is about 200 microns behind, which is where what the optical does. So we are again short by 200 microns. So that is remedied by the optical. And the third difference, as I said, is accuracy. Accuracy increases to from 0.1 millimeter in ultrasound to about 0 0.012 millimeter, one tenth most in optical, which is quite a bit because of the short wavelength. So three basic theoretical problems of ultrasound. Is there anything else apart from the theory? Well, there is actually a practical advantage of far more of optical biometry. First of all, is non-contact, so no cross-contamination. You can see how she's sitting there without any contact. So there's no cross-contamination. There's no corneal compression, which Ashwin was telling us about. It's a major problem for the corneal compression. So there's nothing, there's nothing compressing cornea. That's a major advantage. It's easy. You know, it does not depend upon the skill of the optometrist. <coughs> it does not depend upon your skill. So anybody can do it. It's fast. It's less than about a minute. In 50 seconds, in the latest machines, 50 seconds, less than a minute, your biometry is over. 
more accurate and much more accurate in posterior staphylomas and silicon failed eyes. And of course, you don't make a mess of the OT floor with immersion biometry. So that's quite a lot of advantages, I should think. What about the drawbacks? You've told us, oh, I've told you all about the positives. Is there any drawbacks? What about the dark side of the moon? Of course, there's a dark side. What is that? First is expensive. It's very, very expensive. Second is that not all cataracts can be imaged by the dense posterior subcapsulars, nuclear cataracts, grade fours, coronal opacities, edemas may not be fixated because it depends upon the patient fixation. So these calculations may not be done as well. Anything else you should be aware of before you buy this white elephant? Well, optical biometry is something very important. Optical biometry axial length, remember, is different from ultrasonic axial length. So the A constant will differ, which Ashwa mentioned a bit. What is that? Remember that the IL manufacturer's A constant should not be used as they are based on ultrasound. So if you do an optical biometry, the A constant changes from that which is written on the IL box, like that. You can see that 118.4 that I mentioned there, that is the calculated on the ultrasound. Now if you use a optical biometry, that changes. That changes, and you cannot use the same IL bar. I'll demonstrate by an example. Usually, the rule of thumb for those of us who are graduating, the rule of thumb, I will tell you, but dial contact, since there's no contact, so optical constants, optical biometric constants will be slightly higher than the ultrasonic constant. And they are close to the immersion. The optical A constant will be close to the immersion, but they'll be higher than contact. And rule of thumb, published by Dr. Hill, if you want to start, is to add about 0.3 to 0.4 to the A constant that is calculated by the ultrasound. So if you want to do calculate to optical biometry, so you have to add about 0.3 to 0.4. This is just a rule of thumb. It depends on the formula to the ultrasonic A constant. Let's take an example. Let's take an axis of IQ SN60WF with a IQ, which a 118.7 axial length. But remember, uh, big point, A constant, but this, remember, is calculated on ultrasound. Now we want optical biometry gives the emetropia of say 20.5, but we have to add 0.34. So 118.7, we add 0.34, is about 119. So you add 0.34 to the IL power as well and make it 20.84. So you will implant a 21 diopter IOL, not a 20.5, because if you implant a 20.5 based on the ultrasound, you'll get a 0.5 hypermetropia, which is not at all desired by the patient, because remember, he has no accommodation. What are the options we have in the market? There are plenty of options. You may have heard of only one or two, but at least eight, nine companies are emerging. You can see them in the Aladdin by Topcon, and the AL Scan, Nidec, Argos not released yet, and Cassini, the Galili by Zima, the IL Masters, the Lens Stars, and so many others. So which one do I choose? Let's look at the leaders. The leaders are <coughs> 10 years after the IL Master was launched, 10 years, which is 2009, Hagstrite launched a Lenstar 900, 10 years later. And it has, looks like that, which you may have seen, fairly common nowadays. It has one scan, 30 seconds, and nine measurements. Nine measurements. This is doing very well nowadays. A lot of people like this one. It uses a slightly different principle, optical low coherence reflectometry. It's similar to that, but it's not identical. It's slightly different from the principle which IL Master uses, but it's quite as well. Then the IL Master 700 was launched in 2014. Okay, 500 was the initial launch. 700 is the latest one, 2014. And this uses an OCT. This is a different technique. It's an OCT machine, which calculates 2,000 scans per second. That's astonishing, mind-boggling. Zeiss claims that 90 9% cataracts have a penetration rate. That means that dense PACs, nucleus callosus, we can manage with this. I, most of us, actually, my experience is that we can, most of them. At the full length, OCT is provided that can detect irregular geometries, irregular geometry in the eyeball before you operate, like a lens tilt. You can see the lens is tilted. It's picked up here, the lens tilt. And this, you may have problems in surgery. So the OCT, this is just behind before the surgery, can pick it up. That's the IL master. And it has onboard toric calculator, which means you do not need an online calculator. You do not need an online calculator. You can calculate right away. So 700 seems a very, very good option. What else do we have? Oops. What I meant was the Aladdin. Forgive me for that. I make a mistake. But this is the Aladdin from Topcon. It's also doing well. The top three, these are things. It depends upon what you want to prefer. 
Is there any, any particular thing that I would recommend? Well, if you want to compare the two, Lenstar versus 7700, what we have the data tells us that there's no clinically relevant differences in IL power calculations. They're almost similar. The final product, the IL power calculations, they're almost similar. But in opaque ocular media, like vitreous hemorrhage, or dense lens thickness, longer axial lengths, IL master seems to be easier and faster. 700 seems to be easier and faster, but it depends. The one main advantage of the lens star, it has this 32 keratometric points taken in lens star. It measures the keratometry at 32 different points, like that, in two different circles, 16 millimeters each. Uh, so keratometry is very, very precise. That's the one advantage. And unfortunately, Zeiss upgrade charges are brutal. So you have to click that man. And finally, should I jettison my old faithful then? Should I, should I take my, throw it, in, throw it in the river? Not at all. Because it's still 90% cataract still measured, about 10% you still have to leave it. So don't throw it away. Dense PSCs, we still require that. And is it meant for you? Well, yes. If you can afford it, definitely. It is the gold standard for any cataract surgeon. So any serious cataract surgeon, one should require it. But also remember, there's no need to mortgage the wife and the kids okay, for buying this. There's no need to mortgage them. Because remember, even in the best of best of hands, experienced eyes, with, with optical biometry, only 33% eyes still get uncorrected 6 by 6. These are stats from our latest paper. And in the best experienced surgeons, 80% eyes only have 0.5 plus minus diopters of intended spherical target. Okay, so, so finally, it's very, very good. But for those of us, you know, the last word is for those of us, you know, hardworking ophthalmologists, underpaid, overworked, underappreciated, what do we do? Well, there's some thing. Remember the target refraction still, target refraction for best uncorrected, uncorrected distance in your vision is still a minus one to minus 1.5 diopter spherical equivalent. Okay, with a, against the rule astigmatism, preferably, is better. Please remember for best uncorrected distance and near, both. Thank you very much. Are there any questions I would like to take? Otherwise, we'll shift to the next topic. As you can see, <coughs> we're a little short of time. Uh, thanks, Ashwat, for that wonderful talk. We had a good time there.